One of the most common questions that I get is, how did that old product that you reviewed hold up after your review? Well, that's what this video is about. This is my 22nd installment of my update videos where I go back to 10 past videos in order and talk about how each one did after my review. Some I've used and some I haven't. Without further delay, let's get right to it. Update number 22. All right, let's get started with my 211th review, which was a three-way comparison of three retractable hoses. The Pocket Hose Silver Bullet, which is the ASEAN TV offering that was new at the time, the Amazon Best Seller, and the Amazon's Choice. I picked the TVI Pro, which is the Amazon Best Seller, as my choice, although all three of them have held up. And in fact, I loaned out those hoses and I've used them, but I was careful to abide by the instructions. And when I loaned it out, I also made sure the person I loaned it to abided by the instructions, which is to drain it after each use, to not leave it out in the sun, to bring it in after every use, and to not leave it under pressure. These hoses are pretty susceptible to breaking, especially if you leave them under pressure, don't drain them, and leave them outside. In this case, all of them have held up throughout the summer. Haven't used them much this winter, but I just pulled out the TBI for my indestructible notes, which you'll see in a little bit here. And uh, it's, it's still working. The only thing I've noticed is that in a few spots like this, I'm getting some fraying. That's it though. That's, that's just, I think that's more cosmetic than anything because it's still, there's no leaks. And this has been under pressure for at least a half an hour now. So uh, I'll probably drain this, take it back inside, but I got a, a whole year out of these. So I'm pretty happy with them. Usually these retractable hoses don't last more than about a season. So anything I get beyond that, I'm kind of happy with. I still prefer the metal garden hoses. Uh, these you can leave outside under pressure, walk on them and they're pretty durable. But here's some scenes from my original three-way hose comparison. All right, what's cool about these expandable hoses is that you turn the hose on and they slowly fill up with water and expand. Bailey is inspecting it to make sure it's okay. I think it passed her test because she walked away from it. I'm gonna water my half-dead plant over there. That's all I really have out here is living. All right, it's been about 30 minutes and it's still held up, so that's a good sign. That's the one thing I do like about these hoses is how light they are. This is kind of a cheap plastic nozzle. It seems like something you'd find almost at the dollar store. I'm not overly impressed by the nozzle itself. Now, two of the instructions say you're supposed to put the water on slowly and then ramp up the pressure, which is what I'm doing here. Oh, come on, Bailey. <laughs> See which one Bailey likes the best? Flat. That's like for bushes, okay? It looks like it hasn't popped or is leaking, so that's great. As you can see, it's starting to contract. See this? The TBI Pro. And they have their zinc nozzle, which is very nice. It's heavy. It's pretty cool, huh? I like it. This seems like it's much better made than the other one. Um, um, um. It's been a half an hour and this one has not leaked either. So it's time to drain this one. The TBI is about 19 feet. As we walk down to the end here, you'll see that the, the flexi hose is about 18 feet and the pocket hose silver bolt's about 20 feet. It doesn't really kink, that's the thing. I'm squeezing it. So these hoses are very good at not kinking. Not quite as flexible as the TBI, but a little bit more flexible than the Pocket Hose Silver Bullet. If you take a look at the three nozzles included, this is the Pocket Hose Silver Bullet, this is the Flexi Hose, and this is the TBI. Obviously the TBI, the, by far the best. Uh, if I had to choose one of these, I would go with the TBI Pro. It seems to be better made. It might be $40, but it has those nice accessories with it as well that seem like they're also well made. Again, the proof will be over the long haul how well all these hold up, and I'll let you know if anything changes. For my 212th review, I compared seven different can openers, ranging in price from $1 all the way up to $35. All these were manual can openers. Some of them were traditional, some were smooth edged. The $20 KitchenAid is the one that I chose. As you can see, it's an attractive can opener. Doesn't require a lot of strength, it cuts well. It pretty much works as you want a can opener to work. And it's also available not just on Amazon, but also in stores like Target. Here's some scenes from my original can opener comparison. It feels very cheap, but doesn't mean it won't work. Oh, it's already off to a bad start. It's a little rough, but it works. Oh, this is not working. Ugh. That definitely turns a lot smoother than the dollar store can opener. I think we're on a roll here now with this Farberware, five bucks. Not too bad, really. All you have to do is squeeze it with one hand. Is it the most efficient method of opening a can? I'm not sure about that. Oh man, my hand is getting tired. All right, so KitchenAid is a pretty well-respected, popular brand, so it better come through on these cans. Let's see how it does. Oh, it punctured very easily. 
Very smooth. Oh, yeah. That first can was just like cutting through butter. All right, well, the KitchenAid just slaughtered these cans. Instead of cutting downward on the lid, it cuts on the side. And there we go. But look, that's pretty smooth. Seems to be a little bit of effort. And there we go. It actually worked. Oh, it's working, but man, is that tight. Feels well made. It had better for 35 bucks. Okay, well, it's, it's smoother than the four in one. It's slightly hitting the table when I'm going around, but I'm still able to do it. This one is much smoother. It is actually pretty good, I must say. And that leaves the KitchenAid number one. This is a good can opener. This one is my number one pick for the best can opener of these seven. Number 213 were the One Power Readers and ASEAN TV reading glasses that supposedly auto adjusts depending on your needs. Now, I have not continued to use that product because it didn't really do what it said it was going to do. It didn't, I didn't really find that it auto adjusted. It seemed to be set at a magnification of 2.5, which I don't need. I need a lower magnification than that. Now, as far as reading glasses goes for the 2.5 magnification, it worked okay, but there was nothing really special about them. I definitely didn't find that they auto adjusted like they were supposed to. I have a pair of reading glasses that's much more compact that I still use, so I didn't really find any use for the One Power reading glasses. So unfortunately, the One Power reading glasses have been relegated to the ASEAN TV Boneyard, and I couldn't find them because I don't know where they're at. I haven't really used them much since then. Here's some scenes from my original One Power Readers review. One Power Readers. They can supposedly adjust from 0.5 to 2.5 automatically. How do they look? I can't see the camera, but how do I look? And the One Power readers, they are in focus, it looks like. Oh, it still seems kind of blurry to me. And less in focus. To me, it's most in focus right here, which is more like about seven or eight inches. There was a news channel that actually took the One Power readers to a, an optometrist, and they ran them under the machine, and the whole lens showed up as a 2.5. They couldn't get it to go down to 0.5 like they advertise. To me, the One Power readers are really no better than a standard pair of 2.5 reading glasses. If you're looking for a good pair of 2.5 reading glasses, these might fit the bill. If you're looking for something that's extraordinary that might automatically adjust, I don't know if I would put too much stock in the advertising claims. All right, I'm down on the floor here for number 214, which is the Bedjet, which res resides underneath my bed. It's basically a climate control for your bed, and I name this as my best item for 2019. Uh, it sends air through this tube up into your bed. It can be cool or warm. I actually use it at least once a day, sometimes more than that, and I recommend it all the time. It's just a great product. The only real negative about this is the price, but it's held up really well. I have the version three right now, which is a little more compact than the version two, but otherwise they function the same. If you're looking for a luxury item for your bedroom, this has got to be on your short list. But here's some scenes from my original Bedjet review. So far, it's looking pretty easy. And here it goes. Again, you're supposed to put a blanket on top to hold it against you, but that's exactly how the process works. Oh, there it goes. It's filling up. Oh, look at this. Well, that's pretty interesting, huh? The bed jet gets its air from the coolest part of the room, which is gonna be on the floor. And you can actually set the temperature you want. One side of the bed is 77. Whoa. If cost is not a factor for you, it's certainly something you might wanna consider. It is the ultimate luxury in sleeping accessories. Number 215 was a comparison of ice cream scoops from $1 all the way up to this elaborate midnight scoop, which cost 35 bucks. Now, when it came down to deciding the best one in that video, I had to choose between an $11 KitchenAid and this $35 model called the Midnight Scoop. Now, I factored in the price, so I picked the KitchenAid, but I've used the Midnight Scoop almost exclusively since then. Both of my top choices were great, but this is the one I reach for when I need to scoop ice cream. Here are some scenes from my original ice cream scoop comparison. Today, I'm comparing five different ice cream scoops. We have first up the Dollar Store Ice Cream Scoop.
Okay, not terrible. Of course, not the most impressive scoops in the world either, though, kind of flat. Let's go with the Farberware, the 550 one from Big Lots. It has this fancy quick release on it. Ugh. Oh, wow. Ugh. Ugh. Well, I really had to push hard, actually harder than the dollar store one, but so far I'm not, I'm not having these impressive scoops here. All right, this one's definitely pushing through the ice cream more easily. Okay, this one seemed to go through a lot easier. Now for the KitchenAid, which is heavier. It's heavier than the others. All right, the KitchenAid just glided through there. These KitchenAid scoops seem like they're more scoopy looking than some of the others. The others are kind of flat. Let's try the $35 bad boy here. I'm trying to hold this so you guys can see on the camera, by the way. <laughs> I would say the spoon is not doing so good. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. It's actually pretty good. Factor in the price and performance, KitchenAid number one. I would say just performance, you might want to consider this deluxe luxury ice cream scoop. Ah, the indestructible shoes were my next comparison video. This is three types of shoes, all in the indestructible shoe category. One is a brand called Indestructible Shoes, the other is Rocket B, and one from Amazon. Now, the Amazon one is clearly inferior to the other two, so that left the Rocket B and the Indestructible Shoes. I found the Indestructible Shoe brand to be the best by a slight margin over the Rocket Bs. I will say that right after my video was posted, I got something of a threatening email from the Indestructible Shoe makers because they didn't like that I had a link to the Rocket Bee. Well, I had a link to all of them, but I had a link to the Rocket Bee in my description, and they said it was an infringing link, so I just took the link to theirs out too. So get out of here with your threatening emails. And the Rocket Bees are still being sold, so I'm not sure what's up with that. But I digress. The reason I'm out here is because I've left these shoes out here for a year now. They've been out in the heat above 115 degrees, in the cold below freezing. I wasn't really sure what to expect from doing this, but I figured I would at least put it through one more long-term test of the elements to see how it happens. So let's go in the patio and check out how they work, and then we're gonna check out some scenes from the original review. All right, I've got all three shoes. Look how faded they look. I'm not sure if that's being faded from the sun or if just dust has blown on them from the past year because I am in the desert. So I'm gonna use my TBI Pro hose. I wonder if anything's living in there. Ooh, there's, there's definitely stuff inside there. All right, let me rinse these off. I'm gonna see if this is dirt or this is just being faded. It looks like it was more dust, because that's definitely not the original luster, but it's, it's not as light as it was before. Uh, still faded, but not as faded. You know, leaving these out in the elements for a year seemed like a good idea at the time, but I'm not really sure what I got out of that. All they are is just faded, but that's it. Wow, I just, I just wasted a year waiting for this, and it was completely anticlimactic. All I can say is that they fade if you leave them out in the sun for a year. That's about the only thing I've got out of this. But I stand by my original conclusion. Indestructible shoes best, Rocket be right behind it, and the Swadex way in the back. But let's get to some scenes from the original Indestructible shoe comparison. But today I'm comparing three types of so-called indestructible shoes. And all these shoes have a metal shank in the sole, steel toe, and they're supposed to be good for outdoor use, for workplace environment, and they're supposed to be indestructible. Because all these advertise as not just being indestructible, but also being shoes you can wear for re regular everyday use. How do they feel at first use, huh? A little weird. It feels a little weird? All right. All right, guys, so I enlisted the help of my friend Justin from the Fabrication Series. It is smoking. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Come on, really? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, worse. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh-oh, that went through. Oh, that went through. That went through. Oh, that went through. Jeez. In your foot, right there. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, we got it. Did you go through? Oh, yeah. yeah. Flat as a pancake. 75, 76, 77 thou. This is thinner. Yeah, that's why it smashed down. Holy wow. I can't duplicate some of the things they show there. To me, they're a durable shoe. They're not indestructible.
This is number 217, and this was laundry lint catchers. These were heavily advertised on social media throughout early 2019, and you notice that you don't see them advertised anymore. That's because they don't work. In theory, they're supposed to float in your washing machine like this. The water goes through there, and this is filtered out, and all the lint's caught in there. That's a great theory, but when it came time to actually use it, it didn't really work. I tried these for many weeks after my original video was posted. I still never got more than just a little bit in the bottom. I don't think these really work, but here's some scenes from my original Lint Catcher review. Good girl. This should be easy, huh? Oh she, oh, she likes this. Good girl. You like that? That's pretty bad. Full of hair. The thermal shirt covered. And the shirt I was wearing also covered. Just throw them in there. And when it's done filling up, then I'll put the mesh bags in there. All right, it's done filling up. So it looks like we got this much off of the four shirts. I'm still seeing hair. Still seeing it. Yeah, it definitely has hair still on it. I'm wondering if the hair in the length that the mesh baskets picked up would have just gone down the drain anyways. It's hard to tell. But when you look at the end result of the, the lint catchers, washer and dryer, and just the dryer, there's not much difference. To me, this is not an item that really lives up to the advertising hype. For my 218th product review, I did several pizza cutters and I still use two of them to this day. It's probably no surprise that I use my top choice, which is the SZA pizza cutter from Dream Farm. This works more like scissors than a pizza cutter. But perhaps my surprising choice is that I actually still use the number four choice in that comparison, which is the Star Trek pizza cutter. Now there was nothing really unusually great about the Star Trek pizza cutter, but it I guess I just had, didn't have the heart to put this one away because I like it so much, so because it's available, I reach for it once in a while. I've used both of these. I'm happy with both of them. But here's some scenes from my original pizza cutter comparison. Oh, it's going through. It looks like a bike going through with like really thick slush. This is not really the sharpest blade ever. This is a little bit weird having the fork, having to hover over it like that. See, if, yeah, if I start pointing down, like I get, I'm, I'm jabbing the pizza with the fork. I think for small pieces, it actually works pretty well. All right, it just seems to cover the entire diameter of this pizza. Well, that seemed to work pretty well. well. Yeah, I think it's cutting through the cardboard underneath. Oh, it made very quick work of that. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive. All right, now it's time to boldly cut where no man has cut before with the $17 Star Trek pizza cutter. Gotta check this one out. Well, that's felt like a normal pizza cutter to me. They need to have like laser beams you can actually cut it with. Nah, just kidding. All right, this was this felt like a traditional pizza cutter. The handle may not be as comfortable as a regular one, but it's so cool looking, I gotta give it a pass. Oh, wow. Whoa, wait a second. That cuts really good. Whoa, whoa. Now you're supposed to be able to serve slices as well, so after you cut it, oh, wow, look at this. I'm actually kind of a fan of this. Okay, well that's, wow, okay, that's way better than I expected on this one. Wow, look at that. No stickies. Boom, whoa, this thing is tearing through it. There's two reasons I didn't rank this higher. Number one is the price at $36. Number two is that you can see clean is a much more of an issue because half the blade, it goes up and, and through here. This thing shocked me at how effective it was at cutting pizza. I had low expectations and they were surpassed. Number 219 was this 1981 unopened Ronco Egg Scrambler. This is a vintage ASEAN TV product that scrambles an egg in the shell. All you do is put the egg over there, you press a button, it swirls around and when you crack the egg open, you have scrambled eggs. Now I found that it actually worked exactly like the advertised even though it was decades later. I will say I've made a lot of omelets and scrambled eggs over the last year and I've never really reached for this. So it may be an idea that worked but most people wouldn't really have much of a need for it. I will also say that although Ronco went out of business a few years ago, I sent in the warranty card to see what would happen and it came back undeliverable. So I'm gonna have to rough it without a warranty for my egg scrambler, even though it's almost 40 years old. But here's some scenes from my original Ronco egg scrambler review. It's an inside the shell egg scrambler. Automatically blends white and yolk in five seconds. It's like all you have to do is 
Press the egg on the point, hold down for five seconds, and lift it off. Copyright 1981, baby. That's right. Whoa. That looks so high tech. So what you're supposed to do is place the egg on that pin and press down. And that's all you're supposed to do for five seconds. Press down. Oh, what's happening? Whoa. That's not loud. Oh, wow. Take a look at this. It actually worked. Maybe I'll get faster at this. Come on. There we go. I'll hold down a little bit longer. One, two, three, four, five. Give it a couple extra seconds there. That's pretty good. I want to say it actually works. Which is the Ronco and which one is using a whisk? Can you tell? Well, that is the Ronco and that is the whisk. Do you really need a whole separate device that takes six C batteries to save about 15 seconds scrambling an egg over a whisk? Probably not. I will say though that the Ronco egg scrambler does work. This is the Easy Cracker, which was my 220th video comparing different egg crackers. Now you may be surprised to hear that there's actually devices that crack eggs for you out there and this is one of them. So I compared several of these gadgets and surprisingly some of them actually worked. Even though I'm not sure it's a really necessary item to have, I was surprised that some of them actually worked. Now even though I picked one called the Pro Kitchen, which is a ball dropping type, this is the one I've tried to use over the last year just because it's so strange looking. But I've cracked a lot of eggs over the last year. I've never really thought, oh, I need the egg cracker. So as with the Ronco Egg Scrambler, even though these devices work, I don't think there's much of a need for either one of these. But here's some scenes from my original egg cracker comparison. And you're supposed to open it slowly. I hear cracking. Oh, oh, what do you know? So there's a sharp point there. This pushes up and these pull out all at the same time. It's, scra it's scraping the edge. Let me do it faster. Oh, we did it. And it also broke the yolk though. All right, so for the easy cracker, it's supposed to be pretty easy, right? So you're supposed to put the egg in here and squeeze the handle. Ready, one, two, three. Oh, oh, it had jettisoned it out. All right, I've attached the egg separator. Now the yolk's supposed to fall in here and the whites are supposed to come out the side. Let's see if that actually works. I think it actually works. There you go. All you're supposed to do is Pick up the ball and drop it. And voila, it actually worked. Nice clean cut, came out right away. I think it actually worked pretty well. Let's see what we got here. E ah, oh, there we go. And it's pretty good, pretty good. Not, not as good, not as clean a cut. See a little bit of a problem here on the side. But it did work. Number one, to me, the clear favorite is the Pro Kitchen that worked fine on all uses. It's very durable, it's attractive to display, easy to clean. I think this is the clear choice of the five egg crackers that I tested out. So in the end, I would say the Bed Jet was certainly my favorite of this bunch. I would say the Ice Cream Scoop and the Sizzle Pizza Cutter also are ones that I use quite often as well. I would say that the Laundry Catchers are probably the ones at the bottom of the list from this group. But that's all I got. Be sure to stay tuned as I update future videos just like this. Take care, guys.